again, this is from the new book, like the book that they do during the school year, not the book that you're currently using. This is, there's a module that says chapter four new book. It's all the way at the bottom, I think, right? Or did I drag it? So there's transformations in like graphs of lines and parabolas and all that stuff. Like that's in algebra stuff. And then there's transformation in polygons. And that's obviously what we're going to cover. So there's two different major, first of all, some definitions for a transformation. A transformation itself is a function that moves or changes a figure in some way to produce a new figure. So you could be sliding it right or left. You can be, put, come on. You can be moving it up or down. You can make it big or small. You can flip it, rotate it, all that stuff. Those are all called transformations. The image is the new figure. So when it says something about find an image or find a pre-image, the pre-image is the original one and the image is what happens after you shift it. There are two types of transformations, rigid, well, two types of like the general types. Rigid motions and non-rigid. Rigids do not change the size of the shape. Non-rigid does. So what we're going to talk about today is rigid. So you're keeping the general shape of it, the size and shape of it. There are things that are called non-rigid motions, which can make it bigger or smaller, kind of like your similar triangles. So there's three kinds of um, transformations that we're going to talk about that are rigid. The first is translation. So a translation is literally like a slide. You're sliding it to the right, to the left, up, down, okay, or a combination of the two. There are vertical and or horizontal components. So there could be just a vertical component where you're taking all your points and you're sliding them up. There could be a horizontal component where you're taking them all and sliding them right or left. Or something like this where you've got the combination of the two. So these A, B, C, the regular letters, are your image. That's your original one. And then the ones that have the little apostrophes on them, these are called their prime. So like A prime, B prime, C prime. That's your pre-image. So this is a translation because you're moving it. You're just sliding it. It's not rotating or anything. So this A went from here to here. So if I was to figure out what that change is, I'm going to count the change in the X and the change in the Y. So this original point would have been 0, 3. And it went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right. So my X got added 5. And then it went 1 down. So the Y was subtracted 1. And that's how you would write a translation. So every other point should move the same. If I take B, which this coordinate point, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 2, 4. We should have gone to the right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then one down. You can also have take that coordinate point, two, four, added five to the X and subtracted one from the Y to get your new coordinate point. So you could either count it on a coordinate plane or you can actually use the physical points to do whatever it is. So when it says what's the rule of it, because that's what's gonna ask for in a little bit, that's what it means. What's the change? Your X went to the right five, so it's plus five, and your Y went down one, so it's minus one. And the same thing has to be done for all the, all the vertices. So this is a triangle, but it could be a quadrilateral. It could be a hexagon. It could be as many sides as it wants. But all the, all the um, sides have to be the, the same. All the, the points have to be changed the same way. The second kind is called a reflection. Okay, And if you think about your reflection, if you're staring at your reflection in a mirror, okay, it uses a line like a mirror to reflect the figure. So there is some line, sometimes it's the axis, the y-axis or the x-axis. Sometimes it's a y equals x, sometimes it's an x equals two, random lines. And all the points are flipped over that line. That line is called the line of reflection. And to find the new points, you would count the same distance away from the line of reflection. So if you look at this diagram here, the blue, again, that's your original image, this one, is reflected over this green line. So this green line is actually y equals one. That would be the equation of that line. That would be your line of reflection. And then every point is flipped in the opposite direction but the same distance away from that line. So c didn't change because it's on that line, but b, which was one unit above this line, translates down one unit and that's your b prime. A, which is two points above your line, translates down 
two points to be the A prime. So that's one way to do it. If you draw it out, you draw your line, and then you count the same distance away in the opposite direction. There are four special kinds of reflections over the x-axis, the y-axis, the y equals x, and the y equals negative x lines. And for these, you don't need your graph. If you're flipping it over the x-axis, then you change the sign on the x. So if my coordinate point, well, this is not over the x-axis, but if my coordinate point was 1, negative 2, and I went over the x-axis, I would keep the 1 and I would change the 2 to positive 2. So you're changing just the y. If it's reflected over the y-axis, then you change just the x. If it's over the y equals x line, you flip the x and the y. And if it's y over y equals negative x, then you flip them and change their signs. Again, you can do this by graphing or using those shortcuts. Graphing, you can do it for any reflection. These shortcuts only work for these four. Okay, the last one is rotation. So the rotation is literally just that. Like if you think about something being rotated, it's rotating or turned about at a fixed point. That point is called the center of rotation. Rays drawn from the center of rotation to a point and its image form the angle of rotation. So if this is my original shape over here on the left, if this is my image, and I rotate it in this direction, that's how far you're rotating it. So if you think about your like this being zero degrees, this would be 90 degrees, this would be 180 degrees, this would be like I don't know, 240-ish degrees. That's how much it's rotated. These are your shortcuts for rotation. So if it's being rotated 90 degrees, then you switch the coordinate points and you change the B or change the X once you switch it. If it's 180 degrees, then you change the signs on both. And if it's 270 degrees, then you switch it but you change the sign on the second one after you switch it. So it becomes the Y after you switch it. So 90 degrees, you change it, you flip, switch them, then change the first one. 270, you switch it and then change the second one. So the way you'll see these are in two ways. The first is like this. It says identify the translation and then write a rule for the translation. So you're looking at these three and you're figuring out are they is it a change uh, translation, rotation, or reflection? So if it's not easy to see from the picture, if it's a translation, it has to be facing the same way. That's one thing to do, okay? If it's a reflection, it's going to be flipped over some line. And then obviously if there's a rotation, you should see like, like the arrow kind of gives it away on this one, but let's look at the first one. So are these facing the same direction? Yes. No, right? Look at that. Look at the E, the B, C, and the E, F, right? Those are the longer sides of these and the ones on the right side and ones on the left side. So these aren't the same. These didn't slide, right? These, what happened to these? They're reflected. What's the line that they're reflected over? What's halfway between all those points? The y-axis. Yep. So this would be a reflection. And it's the y-axis. If you don't see it, then what I would recommend doing is getting the coordinate points. So this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 1. So A, negative 2, negative 1. B, negative one, negative one, C, negative two, negative five. And then it moved to D becomes two, negative one, E moved to, or B moved to E, one, negative one, and F, two, negative five. So when you look at these, what changed, each of the x's became the opposite sign, which is also a reflection over the x-axis. So there's two ways to do it. Obviously, look at the graph, 
Second way would be to change the points. So if it said, what's the reflection? It's the Y axis. If it said, what do I do to these points? I'm gonna take X and Y, and I'm going to change the sign on X. So the X, all those signs change to be the opposite sign. That's what it would look like. Okay, two, what would this be? They're the same, right? They're just shifted. So what's that called? Translation. That's the first one. So now you can either identify all your coordinate points, figure out what the change is, or you can literally count. Like if I go from M, and I'm going from M to M prime. So I'm going up 1, 2, which means y, my Y went up 2. And then I'm going left 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which means my X gets subtracted 5. So that's the rule. X, Y would go X minus 5 and Y plus 2. Be careful and make sure you go like the regular one to the prime one. And then, sorry. Oh, you're good. And then 3 is a rotation, right? This is literally not in the same direction. It's the same size, but it's not in the same direction, which means it's rotated. So for, I would say rotation, it might be easiest to identify your coordinate points if you don't see the point, the, the point of rotation, like which direction, how far it's going. Actually, that would go from there to there. But let's say I just take you, this coordinate point is two, negative one, and you prime, which is here, is negative one, negative two. So what happens here is we switch those and we change the sign on the first one. No, sorry, we switch them and we change the sign on the second one. So a switch would be negative one, two, and then we change the sign on the second one, which is a rotation of 270 degrees. Okay, the second way you're going to see it is something like this. So it says graph the triangle with vertices negative 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, and then the image after their translation. So I'm going to pull in a coordinate grid. All right, so what kind of translation is, or what kind of transformation is this first one? I just said it. If we're adding to the X and the Y, what's it called? Translation. So I would start with negative 2, 3, that's P, 1, 2, that's Q, R, 3, negative 1. Then I would take and switch, do exactly what this says for each one. So for negative 2, 3, which is P, I'm going to add 4 to the x and subtract 2 to the y, and I'd get 2, 1. And that's my new coordinate point, 2, 1. This is hard to see because it overlaps. That's p prime. Then q, which is 1, 2, I'm going to add 4 to the x, subtract 2 from the y, and I get q prime, which is 5, 0. And then r which was three, negative one. I add four to the X, subtract two to the Y, and I get R prime, which is seven, negative three. And there's my new shape. These shall be primes. That is shifted four units to the right and two units down. So the shape should be the same. It should be facing the same direction. Two is a reflection over the x-axis. So if I reflect over the x-axis, I change the y's. So my p prime becomes two, three. My q prime becomes negative one, two. 
and my r prime becomes negative three, negative one. So same original, negative two, three, one, two, three, negative one. And then you can either reflect this over the x-axis, so everything should be the same distance away above or below. So like if r is here at negative one, then it's going up. Wait, r was three, negative one. Did I graph the right one? Yeah. Then I'm going over the x-axis. Wait, did I change the x? I did. Hang on. Sorry, I should have changed the y. The x stays the same. The y changes. X stays the same, Y changes, X stays the same, Y changes. So it should be the same distance down as up. There's R prime. The Q is two above, so I'd go two down. That's Q prime, which is also one negative two. The P is three above, so I'd go one, two, three underneath. And there's your updated, reflected over the X axis. And then the last one is 180 degrees about the origin. So we're gonna take our coordinate points and we're gonna change the signs on both. So P becomes two, negative three, Q becomes negative one, negative two, and R becomes negative three, negative one. So same initial points, negative two, three, which is P. One, two, which is Q and R three negative one. So that's my original one. And then I have to flip it 180 degrees. So two negative three is P prime, negative one, negative two is Q prime, and negative three, negative one is R prime. Wait, sorry. Negative one, negative two, two, negative three, and negative three, negative one. Should be negative three, positive one. So that's rotated 180 degrees, which is also the same as reflected over the y equals x line. So sometimes these things overlap. Okay, questions. <laughs>